blessings to everybody. Listen, this is going to be a, a very, 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 very quick scope. Hopefully everybody's doing well. <clears throat> blessings to everybody. Blessings to everybody. Hopefully everybody is doing well. The weekend is here. Anybody's excited about the weekend? <clears throat> the weekend is here. I'm actually here this weekend in the, uh, this week rather, in the beautiful city of uh, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. My uh, older sister uh, is actually getting married today, so we are excited about that. I talked about it on last night's scope. Listen, um, if you didn't have an opportunity to uh, catch last night's scope, you want to go back and uh, play, or get the replay rather, you want to go back and get the replay, I'm talking just a phenomenal prophetic move of God on last night, uh, for those of you in whom are here, uh, this morning or today or this afternoon, this evening, uh, tonight, uh, whatever time zone uh, you're existing or you dwell in, if you didn't have an opportunity to get the, uh, the scope from last night, you may want to do that, you may want to go back and catch the replay on last night, so uh, I'm here in the, uh, the great city of uh, New Orleans this week, yep, somebody says congratulations to your sister on her marriage, yeah, yeah, finally getting her married off, this is her day, so I am here to um, co-officiate uh, with my younger brother uh, the uh, the wedding on tonight, and uh, just honored to uh, to have a part to uh, to play and uh, the marrying off of my older, oh, and she's here. There she is, Elder Alicia Mitchell. She said, thank you so much. Didn't know she was here. She said, did he say finally? <laughs> I, I didn't know you were here. Had I known you were here, I wouldn't have said that. She said, did he say finally? That's my older sister, you all. So I may, I may get a spanking tonight. I don't know. She may slap me silly. <laughs> But she's getting she's getting married on tonight and I am just so honored to be here in the great city of uh, Louisiana to uh, co-officiate the, uh, the celebration on tonight with my uh, with my younger brother uh, Pastor Mark Mitchell and we all are just excited for her so excited for her uh, as a matter of fact it's like a double whammy it's like a double whammy for us all uh, my older sister I kind of mentioned this on last night uh, my older sister is actually getting married on tonight, and right at about three days ago, uh, my younger sister and her husband just moved into their right at about quarter of a million dollar home. I don't, I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging, but I am. <laughs> can, can I brag on? Can that listen? Okay, come on now. They're my sisters. Can I brag on my sisters? Is that all right? You don't, you don't hear me, you don't hear me bragging. Can I brag on my sisters? Praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody, <laughs> somebody said, yes, you can. Yeah, I mean, just a beautiful home. She and her husband, a quarter of a million dollars. Isn't God awesome? I said, isn't the Lord awesome? And uh, as a matter of fact, that's exactly where we're staying now. Uh, we're actually staying in my sister's new home. She's been there now for for right at about maybe three or four days, uh, right at about right at about three or four days, uh, we have been there. Uh, Dr. Hawthorne said, brag on them, prophet. <laughs> or, or, or better yet, can I brag on the God of my sisters? Let me flip that script and change that channel before somebody walk off here time I see he's so in the flesh. <laughs> let, me, let me brag on the God of my sisters. Can I brag on the God of my sisters? I'm, I'm telling you, God's been so awesome, and He's just been so wonderful uh, to the uh, to the Mitchell family, and you know, He's just so so much grace toward us. Until it's just it's unspeakable, unspeakable, and I'm just so 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 excited. So I'm I'm here uh, in the great city of New Orleans, and I mean the weather is beautiful. I mean just astronomically beautiful. Uh, the weather the weather is beautiful here. The weather is beautiful here. Listen, listen. Um, I was actually in route somewhere, <clears throat> and I heard something in my spirit. Someone says, "Are you married?" Absolutely, yes. I listen. I'm not just married. I tell folk all the time, I am happily married. So, somebody, somebody asked the question. They said, "Are you married?" I'm. I'm happily married. Yes, I am. 
I am 28 years, uh, actually going on 29 years next year. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> my, my sister responded by saying yes with about 50 S's behind it. She's trying to emphasize, yes, he is. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I, listen, I am married to not one of, but I am married to the most phenomenal woman in the universe, Lady B herself. And I can say that. Praise the Lord, everybody. I can say that and uh, I can I can say that and be proud about it. She is the most phenomenal woman, the most phenomenal woman uh, that I know. Uh, besides my mother, who's deceased now, but I'm grateful for her. Yeah, so, well, yeah, yeah, answer your question. I am married. Praise the Lord, everybody. But listen, I was I was taking a drive. I was taking a drive. I'm, I'm going to do this very quickly, and, and, and I'm out of here. I'm, uh, I'm out of here. I was taking a drive, and uh, <clears throat> and I heard the Lord say, out with the old, in with the new. A season of change and transition. That's what the Lord said to me just now. I mean, literally just now, I was, I was right about to get out of the car. I was uh, in the process of exiting the automobile. And uh, in the process of exiting the automobile, I was arrested by the Spirit of God, uh, by the way, uh, to, to, to kind of share this word. Uh, because I heard that in my spirit on my way out of the automobile. Um, I literally heard uh, out with the old and uh, in with the new a season of change and transition, a season of change and transition. And of course, whenever God opens the door, whenever God opens the door uh, to seasons of, of change and, and seasons of, of, of transition, uh, he's always closing the door to that which is old or that which was old. Whenever God brings you uh, into seasons of change and, and, and transition. He's always closing the door, closing the door rather to that which is old and uh, opening the door to that which is new. Jesus says this in the gospel according uh, to John. He says, I cannot put old wine uh, into new wine skins, or I cannot put new wine rather. Let me rephrase that, flip that script, change that channel. He says, I cannot put new wine into old wine skins. Why, Jesus? Except the old wine skins uh, burst and the new wine falls to the ground and wastes. He says, I cannot put new wine into old wine skins because if I put new wine into old wine skins, watch this now, new wine ha needs the ability to, to maturate. It, it, it needs the capacity to, to expand. And if I put new wine into old wine skins, Jesus says, because the old wine skins, watch this now, are not pliable enough, because they're not workable enough, because they're not stretchable enough. As the new wine, y'all better get this in the Holy Ghost, as the new wine begins to maturate and as the new wine begins to develop, as the wine begins to grow, as the wine begins to expand, he says it will literally, it will literally burst the old wine skin and the new wine will spill on the ground and waste and how many know that God is not a God of waste so what God is doing in this season is he's going to put many of us into some very uncomfortable positions uh, God's going to put many of us into some very uneasy positions because watch this now God's going to put you in positions in this season and in this hour that's bigger than you and that's greater than you because he's doing something new and you get this in the Holy Ghost because I've got about two minutes and, and, and I'm off. I heard the Lord say that he's going to put you into positions, into some very uncomfortable positions for many of us, uh, for many of us from very uneasy positions, because I heard the spirit of the Lord say, watch this now, that he's going to put you in positions that are bigger than you and that are greater than you because what God is about to do is that God is about to expand you and God is about to grow you. If God continues to keep you into positions that are smaller than you, 
uh, what happens is that you will outgrow that position. Uh, you will outgrow that position and the giftings of God uh, uh, within you will begin to waste because people will not use you because they will not recognize the giftings of the growth of God that's on the inside of you. So just as when Jesus gets ready to pour new wine, he says, I do not pour new wine into old wineskins. I've got to pour new wine into new wineskins. Why? Because new wineskins are pliable enough. New wineskins are growable enough. Uh, new wineskins are stretchable enough. And when you pour new wine uh, into new wineskins, the new wineskin has the ability and the capacity to grow and to maturate and to develop and to expand as the new wine itself begins to expand. God is about to put you into positions that are bigger than you. Uh, he's about to put you into positions that are greater than you. And what God wants, wants you to understand and, and he doesn't want to happen is that he doesn't want you to become intimidated and afraid because reality is this when we are put into places that are bigger than us when we're put into places that are greater than us we have a tendency to become uh, timid we have a tendency to become afraid we we have a tendency to 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 not operate in in the fullness of the endowments the the the, the divine endowments and and the the, the divine giftings of uh, that God has placed upon our lives. You all got to stay with me because this is coming straight from the throne room of God. This is not rehearsed. This is not practiced. This is the Holy Ghost. When God puts us into uncomfortable positions, positions that are bigger than us, positions that are greater than us, positions that are deemed by the world's standards as being more significant than us, we tend to become a little timid. We tend to become a little shy. We tend to become a little, a little withdrawn because we are afraid of to operate in a surrounding that is much greater than us, much significant than us. No, watch this now. Not knowing that what God is about to do within you is the same. I feel glory. I feel the glory. I feel the glory. So God says that in this position of, 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 of change and in this position of transformation, in this position of being out with the old and in with the new, I hear the spirit of the Lord say that like new wine, he's about to put you into positions or into to postures or, uh, 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 in, into into places that are much greater than you, that, that are much more significant to you. He can uh, much more significant than you. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that He cannot continue to keep you where you are. He cannot continue to keep you where you are. Listen to many of us are in a season whereby you have literally outgrown where you are. You have outgrown where you are. And hear me by the Holy Ghost. This doesn't mean to go to your job now and give them a two weeks notice and go to your church and tell your pastor that you're out of that. No, this is not that type of message because God is going to do this. You won't have to do this. God is going to position you. God is going to posture you. God's going to open that door. God is going to release you. I don't want everybody to just go, hey, and just go crazy and start walking out of churches and giving two-week notices concerning your job because, you know, the prophet is giving you a word that God is about to bring you somewhere that's bigger than you and that's greater than you so that you can maturate and develop in the place that God has postured and positioned you in. This is not that type of message, but this is the kind of message whereby you want to prepare yourself. You, will want, you, you want to get ready because for many of you that are tapped in now, God is about to move you. God is about to move you. For many of us, uh, uh, it's days from now. For some of us, it's weeks from now. For some of you all, it's months from now. For some of you all, it's my... It's probably about a year or two from now, but God is about to move you because God's about to place you into a position where you can grow thereby because many have grown beyond the position and the places that you are in today. For many of us, for many of us, this season of, of replacement is going to be very difficult for you. For many of us, it's going to be very challenging for you because you are so emotionally connected to where you are. I'm gonna say it again, I'm gonna say it again. I said for many, it's going to be very difficult. For many, it's going to be very challenging. For many, it's going to be very hard when God opens that door to push you into the next place 
because you are so emotionally connected to where you are. And I, I heard this by the Holy Ghost. I heard this just now. I heard this just now by the spirit of the living God. And this is for somebody who's tapped in right now. Do never, don't ever, rather, don't ever become so loyal to a man that you began to become disloyal to your God. Wow. That was for somebody. That was for somebody. Don't ever become so loyal to a man that you start becoming disloyal to your God. Some of you all are so loyal to a man until when God tells you to move, you won't move. I felt, listen, my, I felt glory on that. I said, I said, I felt glory on that. And listen, I'm not asking anybody to tell on themselves. I, I Listen, just hear ye the word of the Lord. Just hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. I don't want to hear that was for me. Oh my God, the Lord is talking to me. Because somebody, somebody you know may be on here. So you don't want to expose yourself like that. All right. All I want you to do is receive ye the word of the Lord. You know who you are. You know who it's for. Some of you all are so loyal to a man until when God walks in and tell you to walk out, you won't do it. I heard the Lord say, don't be so loyal to a man that you become disloyal to your God. And some of you all are in that position right now where you're so loyal to a man, you'll become disloyal to your God. And when the Lord tells you to move, you won't do it. So this season of change and, and transition uh, for many of us, uh, for the most part, is going to be um, a very difficult season. It's going to be a very difficult season. Um, it's going to be a very challenging season. It's going to be a difficult season. It's going to be a very challenging season because God is about to move you out of your comfort zones. Seasons of change and transition will always cause for movements out of your comfort zones, movements out of places whereby you are familiar with your surroundings. You, you know where the chair is, you know where the sofa is, you know where the lamps are. Are you, are you with me? You, you know, you know, you know where the tables are. You, you know where the bed is, you know where the closets are, you know where the dishes are. You know where the magazine rack is. I mean, you're, you're in a place of familiarity. And for many of us, it's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult moving out of your comfort zone or moving out of places of familiarity. Why? Because you know exactly where everything is. God's about to move you out of this unfamiliar place. I feel glory. I feel the glory. God's about to move you um, out of this unfamiliar place whereby you know where everything is into a place where you know absolutely nothing. Listen, God's about to move you into a place where he's going to have to teach you how to adapt all over again. You, you are about to you are about to be ushered by God into the faith walk of your life because God's about to transition you and God's about to position you into a new place, a place whereby you won't know where the chair is. You won't know where the table is. You won't know where the closet is. You won't know where, where, where the magazine rack is. You won't know where the dishes are. You won't know where the spoons and forks are. You won't know where the TV is. You won't know where the bed is. God's about to move you into a place that is going to be so uncomfortable. And one of the reasons why it is going to be uncomfortable is because it is going to be unfamiliar. The uncomfortable gives birth to the unfamiliar. It is going to be uncomfortable. I'll say it again. I'll repeat it again. It is going to be uncomfortable because it is going to be so unfamiliar because it is the uncomfortable that gives birth to the unfamiliar. But it's going to be a good place. It's going to be a good place. God's about to take you to a place whereby you have never been before. 
but it's going to be a good place. An uncomfortable place is a good place because it's the uncomfortable place. <clears throat> it's the uncomfortable place that brings you into a position of trusting God like you have never trust God before. See, some of us are in a posture now whereby we don't have to trust God because you're so comfortable where you are. You, you know where everything is. You walk into the house, you know where the sofa is, you know where the bed is, you know where the table is, you know where the chairs are. So there's no need for you to trust God. Why? Because you're in a position, in a posture of comfort. But I hear the Lord say that he's about to move you out of this position and posture of comfort. And he's about to usher you into a place where you don't know where everything is, thereby having to trust God even the more because your surroundings are not familiar. God's about to bring you out of the uncomfortable, or the, the comfortable rather. He's about to bring you out of the comfortable into the uncomfortable. He's about to usher you out of the familiar into the unfamiliar. And he's going to bring you to a place whereby you're going to have to trust God like you have never trusted God before. I said, God's going to bring you to a place whereby you're going to have to trust God like you have never trusted God before. This is a new season, a season of change, a season of transition. Jesus says, I can't put new wine into old wineskins because new wine needs room to maturate. It needs room to grow. It needs room to develop. New wine needs room to expand. And if Jesus puts new wine into old wineskins because the old wineskins are not pliable enough, the old wineskins will, will burst, thereby having the new wine to spill upon the ground. But what Jesus does with new wine, you're in a new season, you better get this, you better get this. What Jesus does with new wine is that he puts new wine into new wineskins. Why? Because the new wineskin is pliable enough. The new wineskins are expandable enough. So as the new wine begins to grow, it is the new wineskin that gives it room enough to grow. Some of y'all are in places now where you don't have room enough to grow. And if God, watch this now, if God leaves you there, what God has placed in you is going to go to waste because people will not know how to deal with you. They will not know how to handle you. They will not know how to define you. They will not know how to describe you. They will not know how to use you because what God is doing with you is new. Like the new wine, like the new wine, like the new wine that Jesus puts into new wine skins because the new wine skins are pliable enough. They're stretchable enough. They, they are workable enough. When Jesus takes new wine, watch this now, he puts new wine into a wine skin that's larger than it, that's bigger than it, that's more significant than it because the new wine will have room enough to grow. I'm, I'm telling you now, I want you to get ready because God's about to take you out of your positions of comfort and he's about to posture you into places that are bigger than you, that are greater than you. Watch this now, because there's so much more in you that God wants to pull out of you. There is so much more in you that God wants to pull out of you. Listen, I decree and declare for those of us in whom I hear you thought that God was done with you. God is, listen, God is not a quarter of the way finished with you. There, there is so much more in you. There is so much more in you. And that's why God is about to move you because the places in which you are now can't take you because, listen, this is the Holy Ghost. And I know it is. If I've never prophesied before, I'm prophesying now. This is the Holy Ghost. There is so much more in you that God has to move you. If God doesn't move you, what he has in you is going to go to waste because people will not know how to use you. They will not know how to posture you. They will not know how to position you. Is everybody still there? Are you still there? My God, I feel the glory. Ayarabashe, kitabu sanda. 
God's going to have to move you. God, and, and listen, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why God is about to move you is because God will not allow what he's placed in you to go to waste. I hear the spirit of the Lord say that I have not anointed you to disappoint you. I hear God say, I have not anointed you to disappoint you. God will not allow what he has invested in you to go to waste. Please hear me. Please hear me. Please hear me. The giftings of God that's on the inside of you belongs to the Lord Jesus. Are y'all listening? The giftings of God on the inside of you belongs to the Lord Jesus. God will not invest himself into you and allow what he has invested to go to waste. You listen, you are not. I hear the spirit of the living God say, you are not a wasted investment. My God, I feel the glory. I said, God said, you are not a wasted investment investment. Can I get somebody to type that please very quickly? Come on, type that, type that. Somebody type that as a declaration of your own faith. Type, I'm not a wasted investment. Come on, come on. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to read that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So yeah, type that. I am not a wasted investment. I am not a wasted investment. There it is. I am not a wasted investment. Come on, there's more people on here than that. Come on, everybody, everybody. I'm not a waste a wasted investment. This is a declaration of your own faith. I am not a wasted investment. God will not invest himself into you and let it go to waste. Everything that God invests in, he looks to get something out of. God's about to get something out of you. I feel the glory right now. I said everything that God invests himself in, he gets something out of, and God is about to get something out of you. I decree and I declare by the mouth of the living God that you are not a wasted investment. Everything that God has invested into you, he's about to get out of you. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I heard that in my spirit. I was just driving up to a place. I was just driving up to a place and uh, I heard that in my spirit and uh, I wanted I wanted to download that. I wanted to download uh, uh, into your spirit uh, that which God had downloaded into my spirit. I want you to get ready. I want you to prepare yourself. I'm telling you, get ready, prepare yourself. God is about to usher you all out of some of these places that you're in. He's about to usher you all out of some of these places that you're in because God will not allow what he has invested into you to go to waste. God is not a God of waste. God will not. Jesus says, I will not put new wine into old wineskins. Why? Because God is not a God of waste. He's not a God of waste. God, listen, I want you to get ready now. Because I'm telling you, God's about to put you in places that are going to be a little uncomfortable for you. And the reason why these places are going to be so uncomfortable is because they are going to be so much more greater, significantly greater than what you're used to. Because God's about to get more out of you. Whenever God is trying to get more out of you, watch this now, watch this, watch this. Whenever God is trying to get more out of you, here it is. He will always put you into places that are greater than you. Uh, he will never put you into a place that is below you. But whenever God is trying to get more out of you, he will always put you into places that are greater than you. Something that you could reach for. God doesn't want to put you into a place where the roof is below your feet. He wants to put you into a place where the roof is above your head because now you've got something to reach for. Y'all didn't get that. You didn't get that revelation. You didn't get that revelation. You didn't get that revelation. I said God doesn't want to put you into a place where the roof is below your feet because you have nothing to reach for. He wants to put you into a place where the roof is above your head 
it so that you can have something to reach for. God is about to put you into places that are greater than you because there is so much more in you. There is so much more in you. There is so much more in you. Listen, I decree and declare that you are not a wasted investment. Jesus will never, God will never pour new wine into old wineskins because the word of God says that old wineskins are not pliable enough and the new wine needs room to grow. If he puts new wine into old wineskins, it will fall to the ground and waste. You are not a wasted investment. God's about to take you out of that old wineskin and put you into a new wineskin. He's about to put you into a place that's going to be pliable enough and stretchable enough so that you can mature and, 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 and develop and grow thereby to that which is greater than where you are. God is about to pull something even greater out of you. There's greatness in you. There is greatness in you that God is about to pull out of you. I say there is greatness in you that God is about to pull out of you. God is not yet done with you. God is not yet through with you. God has not yet walked away from you. God has not turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to you. God is not in a place where he doesn't see you and he's not listening to you. God is about to pull more out of you. You are not a wasted investment. You let the devil know. You let that, let that devil know that God is not through with me. I am not a wasted investment. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Somebody says, this is Rhema. Fresh off the press. This is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I went to bed with this on my mindset last night. You're not. You're not a wasted investment. God is greater for you. God is more for you. Watch what God does with you. Listen, I'm out of here. For those of you who did not listen to the scope on last night, go back and listen to it. If you didn't listen to the scope on last night, go back and listen to it. I'm telling you, God is going to bless your socks off. I start seeing images of the number 44 everywhere everywhere go back and listen to the scope on last night because i talked about that and uh and i dealt with that god is going to literally bless your socks off as a matter of fact i had someone to go to my email last night and say prophet after you did that scope i had to go to your email and tell you that i had been having visions about the number 22 and the number 44 and didn't even know what it was about somebody says i woke up to 444 Somebody says, I woke up to 444. I started seeing the number 44 everywhere. I dealt with that last night. If you didn't have an opportunity to get last night's scope, go back and look at it. God is going to bless your socks off. It's the very last scope that I did. Go back and look at it. And God is going to literally bless your socks off. All right? Hallelujah. Pastor Pitt says it was awesome. Bless your man of God. I so appreciate your support. Uh, we appreciate you. And congratulations to your sisters and you and your family. Bless you, Dr. Hawthorne. I appreciate you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you so very much. But go back and look at that, all right? Bless you all. And I love you. Remember, I'm going to leave you with this and I'm out of here. You're not a wasted investment. Jesus says, I will never pour new wine into old wineskins. God's about to bring you somewhere greater than you. It's going to be a very uneasy, uncomfortable season, but you're going to adapt. You're going to adapt. God is greater for you. Bless you and I love you. Appreciate you.